Hey guys, it's Gary. Um, doing a quick update while I can. Uh, started a it's, it's today. It's Tuesday, late afternoon. Started a new job on Monday. Um, not a great job, but I needed a job. It's been almost a year now. Uh, so I applied for a, a, a job. The type of job is not an office job, which is pretty much all I've done for 30 some odd years. Um, and uh, kind of got hired. You know, it's, it's one of these things where they do reviews 30, 60, 90 days. Um, a lot of physical work, a lot of outdoor work. So it's going to be tough, you know, being that winter finally settled in here. Um, right now I'm in orientation. And uh, they only had us in there for about four and a half hours today, which is good because it's uh, an hour and a half drive to get there and then another hour and a half back, if not more. Um, it's going to be a tough, tough, tough week for me, um, you know, just in terms of, um, you know, I might only be getting paid for four and a half hours, but I, I was still out of the house for nine hours today. Um, running to stores and I didn't really have any winter coats to wear and I had to go buy a winter coat and it's uh, <clears throat> it's a hell of a week plus job's gonna be six or seven days a week um, and that's gonna that's gonna be that way for a while um, and I don't really know on any given day you know it, it you know I should get a day off here and there but I don't know I'm pr I pretty much won't know in advance when it is I go into the office, say on a, uh, to, to work, I should say, on a Saturday, and they say, okay, you can have Sunday off type of thing, and I wouldn't find out until Saturday night, you know, whatever. Um, so it's going to be kind of a, a tough time. Once I start work, though, it's, it's very close to home, at least. But the commute for this week is killer, and uh, I just decided to come on and do an update while I could, um, because, you know, I, I did have... Uh, Tomorrow's going to be a busier, longer day, uh, and Thursday and Friday are going to be full days, and I know I'm probably working Saturday, too. Possibly Sunday, I'm not even sure yet. Um, so, you know, definitely have mixed feelings about this. Uh, you know, getting paid a lot less money than what I was making to do uh, physically demanding work at my age is not my ideal setup. Um, have to play it by ear and see how it goes. I, I, I need money. I don't, um, otherwise I wouldn't have a place to live. So, that's the update there. Uh, as a result, you know, I haven't uh, obviously been able to spend as much quality time listening to music. Um, <clears throat> but I did, I did get through, uh, I basically had three things that Andrew sent me uh, the last VCLT that I hadn't gotten around to listening to, and I have since. So, um, one of them was Wynton Marsalis that I still haven't gotten to. I'm actually carrying it with me to have in my car uh, to listen to on the commutes. Uh, I haven't gotten that one in yet to play. Um, but, uh, and I kind of knew what that one sounded like, so I kind of went to the, the two others that I wasn't so sure of. Um, this Andrea Santado, which I showed, Living Pictures as a soundtrack, very interesting album. Few vocal tracks on there with a female vocalist. It is a, um, a movie soundtrack, and as such, it, it, it's a little frustrating at times because a lot of movie soundtracks, uh, you know, you get these pieces that are a minute and a half and two minutes, and they just get to the point where they're starting to develop into something, and they end because that's all the music that that scene asked for or required, I should say. Um, so it's almost like um, I'm looking at it as a sampler because I had never heard his music before. Um, there's a couple of rockish guitar things on, on there. Uh, that's a guest player. Um, a couple saxophone things. Like I said, a couple vocal vocal things. But um, it's interesting as as almost like a, like a little sampler as to this uh, composer because I hadn't heard of him before, and I did. It was enough to make me go on on YouTube and take a look to see what's out there by him that, uh, from one of his regular albums because when I, I took a look at Amazon so quite a quite an array of albums by him actually um, he even made albums with Derek Bailey and I'm like that really surprised me I kind of thought that this would be one of those movie composers that you know he, he you know he went the traditional route of studying you know 
classical type musical structure in school and kind of becomes a mainstream film composer. So you don't expect to see like a duet album with Derek Bailey. Um, the guy's definitely got one foot in the avant-garde um, and I'd really be interested in hearing a lot of his stuff. And he's got a lot of albums out. The weird thing is I never touched across his music, which was quite odd. I know Carm, Carm is familiar with who he is, um, which kind of surprised me. To me, he seems like he would be an obscure guy. Or maybe just seems that way because I missed him totally. Um, but there are quite a few um, samplings of his music from his regular albums on YouTube. And he had done a, uh, even a DVD of a live performance, which um, I decided to take a, take a look at. Um, because there was um, chunks of it, you know, five, six, seven minutes here and there uh, on YouTube, not the whole DVD. And um, it was quite interesting. He's, um, I don't know what his main instrument is, but he does play a lot of percussion and a lot of tuned percussion. And apparently uh, the DVD of the live performance had him uh, playing in, in concert live a lot of tuned percussion, just this massive thing of metallic percussion and him playing it on stage and I believe it triggers synthesizers and everything. Looked very interesting from what I was able to, to see of it. Uh, and I'm real curious now, plus when I found that he played with Derek Bailey, I'm like, wow, uh, that's, that's really something. So it seems like um, I've got another guy that I've got to explore. And I like the fact that he's got at least one foot in the avant-garde and he's doing these um, weird percussion things. But most of the percussion that I saw from that, at least that one DVD ex excerpt, is um, tuned percussion, very, very interesting stuff for people that are inter interested in, uh, gee, I'd say avant-garde music, but you know, it wasn't, it wasn't atonal or anything like that. It was actually, um, it could, I, I don't know, I don't know if you want to use the word pretty, but I think it's accessible to a lot of people that might not be able to quite um, take, say, a Derek Bailey solo you know, album with his weird guitar scratchings and things like that yet. Um, definitely a guy I have to look into into more. Um, and the other one, out of the three that I hadn't got to listen to, I, I have gotten to play this. Um, unfortunately, the way I'm getting to play it is one song here and there. Um, but I really like it. And in a way, I, I don't even know if I can compare it. Now, I had their early things from the early 80s on Narada. Um, the two albums they did, I guess essentially it was a trio, it was these two and a third player um, on two earlier albums, definitely pretty new agey stuff. Um, this stuff covers, I think, a, this is a good, really, really good album, I'm liking it. it, it it's, well, it's got more supporting musicians, there's a whole batch of, this is like another five or so uh, supporting musicians, if not more, three or four of them are percussionists. Um, which doesn't mean it's, it's not exactly like the Santana album or something, but, um, you know, if you were familiar with their earlier material, very pastoral, very pretty, no, I don't think there's any percussion in their earlier albums at all, when they first came out in the early 80s and the Narada things. Um, so there's more percussion here, some, some bass, um, you know, sounds like it could be electric bass, uh, might be like, um, I, ha I have to listen really closely, might, like maybe a fretless or something like that, uh, not in all the tracks. Um, piano synthesizer, a regular drum kit, in terms, uh, and also several hand percussionists. Um, so it covers a wider ground than maybe their early stuff. You know, there's a couple things that uh, sound very, very pretty, very mellow, like you would kind of expect, that are uh, that don't have a lot of the guest musicians on it. Uh, that are featured, you know, primarily the uh, the acoustic and the nylon string guitars. And the oboe that Nancy Rumble plays a lot, um, or English horn also. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty things that almost come, almost come close to like, you know, they could be like a, like a classical piece almost at times. You know, so this is a really, this is a really good album too. I, I don't know what I expected. I know it's been, you know, this is, this is um, actually about ten years down the road from the earlier stuff that I had from them so I kind of expected there to be some changes and and they're nice you know they didn't just redo the same album over and over again but they kept a lot of uh, the sound that kept them special and, and the uh, the album is well this one's from 93 recorded very well um, so the guitar sound really really nice uh, so I'm digging this um, you know and, and it, like I said my, my computer is so full that every time I add a new CD I have to take something out. Um, 
So, you know, I've had to do that for those two albums. So I haven't gotten the Wynton Marsalis one yet into my computer, uh, but I did get those two albums I just showed uh, that Andrew sent me and really liked them. And, uh, you know, um, unfortunately it's probably going to lead to me buying more CDs. Um, certainly the Andrea Santazo, which is just... When I saw that he had worked with Derek Bailey, that kind of surprised me. I didn't think... I never expected that he would be someone that went quite that far into the avant-garde. Um, so I wanted to update you about my job situation, only because uh, my work situation, I should say, if I stick with it, which I... I probably need to. It's not certainly not going to allow me to have any time to even look for another job, um, or, and certainly not to interview, I should say. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to go. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to last there. Uh, but I got to uh, at least uh, get a few paychecks under my belt. Um, the one good thing is, is I did start on uh, Monday, January 4th, um, and I forgot to mention my other video, not that it's a big deal, but um, not having anything to do, uh, and I rarely do actually, on, on New Year's Eve. Um, I actually spent the day of New Year's Eve um, fumbling around on guitar, on my electric guitar and my guitar synthesizer, hoping to come up with something. Came up with a nice little chord sequence and actually recorded uh, an entire five and a half minute piece, which is like three guitar parts, two of them guitar synthesizer, one of them a, a clean electric guitar part kind of in the background, um, and, got that, and got that done and spent the whole day, New Year's, actually New Year's Eve doing that, which was kind, kind of weird. Um, New Year's Eve is always a, you know, something I associate with parties, even though I don't go to them for the most part. But I also uh, always, for, in my mind, uh, associate it with a with a couples as a couples thing too. So when you're single, it was it's always been a little weird to me, you know, to to uh, to new, you know for New Year New Year's Eve always something that I kind of don't look I don't look forward to it at all. So um, I was trying to forget it essentially, and I got hit by some inspiration, which was nice. And uh, I didn't get the piece m mixed. It's actually mixed now uh, as well. Uh, till the following day, till New Year's Day, um, which was Saturday? So fr uh, Friday, I guess. Yeah. I think I mixed it on Friday. I mixed it on night, whatever, whatever New Year's Day was. I thought I had my album complete, uh, actually, and I thought I finally had was ready, almost ready to put it out. I have one other longer piece to mix. And I went into this longer piece that I, um, which is all virtual instrument electronic piece, thinking, I don't know why I thought it was done. And I have this uh, 10 or 12 minute chunk of music. Um, and the first five or six minutes of it were done. And then I realized that the second half of it wasn't done, that I only had a one one single like underlying section track and I, I don't know why I thought that was done I thought and I was so happy because I thought the whole album was done I really wanted to put something out on like January 1st um, you know and that, and that needs actually that that's not realistic because um, I probably need a good four to six weeks after I get copies printed up anyway before it uh, you know it hits CD baby and, and all so so I failed um, now I'm, you know, I don't know when I'm going to, and the thing is, is it's 85 to 90 percent done. Uh, you know, I've got this second half of this longer 10 or 12 or 15 minute piece to do, and then it will be done. But I don't know when I'm going to get to that. Very frustrating. And to be honest, it's not just a question of of time, even though I'm going to have to force myself now. It's also a question of inspiration, you know, when and if I get a day off, um, I got stuff I got to do. I got to like, go do my laundry because I still have to go out to my sister's house because my washing machine has been broken for over a year. Um, so that is a time consuming thing. And so it, it becomes a question of not just having the time, that's a big part of it, I guess. But uh, I don't want to force it um, when I don't have inspiration, you know, kind of. but. I, you know, but sometimes I wouldn't. I, I would be home for weeks on end with nothing to do, and I still didn't have inspiration. So 
I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, uh, so that's it. Uh, that's what I'm doing. Got one more CD to get through of uh, to really give a good listen to, which is the Wynton Marsalis one. Though I'm still listening to the Andrea Santazo and the Singstad and Rumble, trying to really get a solid playthrough of that. Nice is some ocarina on there. Um, it, that, that's the album I was playing in the background, by the way. I should sell it again. Which is this one called Give and Take. I got a full backing band of um, a drummer, well, Neil Spear, used to put out albums in the in the early 80s. Uh, bass player, pianist, synthesizer player, and, uh, three percussionists, and a percussionist and saxophone player. So there's a lot of colors on the album, and it's not like those entire the entire band is playing all tracks. It's those musicians appear here and there. Uh, so there's a lot of variety to it. It's only a 45 minute album. It's quite short. Um, highly uh, recommended. Very easy to listen to, um, even for people that um, may have a problem with uh, instrumental music or certainly not avant garde. It's a nice, nice, pretty album. Um, I don't even. I'm not even sure if that's still in print because I'm not. I don't think the Narada the label is around anymore. Sadly, very one of those small labels of many that came along in the early 80s uh, that kind of specialized in certain types of instrumental music. There's so many of them I can't even name them all. I, every time I pick up a CD, it's nowadays of something that I've had for a number of years um, that's by you know a semi-obscure artist. I look at the label and it's a label that's not in existence anymore. And I know Carm's pulled some of these out in the past as well. He's also done features on labels and the artists of things that he likes, that he has, um, that are labels that are no longer in existence. And many of those things we, we have in common. Um, okay, this is my short, this is my short update, 17 minutes, 17, 18, whatever. Um, it's going to be short for me. wanted to give a little bit of an update. Well, I could because I, I don't know what the, the rest of this week um, is going to be much longer, much longer days. I'll be in the house probably, you know, 12 hours or so. So it's a question of, you know, getting home, taking showers, eating dinner, going to bed is about it. Um, so I wanted to get on while I could. I hope everyone's new year is starting out really great. Um, but hey, if it's not, it's only a date, right? Um, <laughs> I hope it improves. And... Um, I will be, you know, uh, waiting and checking everyone's videos nonetheless. Uh, it's just that I will be doing it, um, you know, obviously it's going to take me longer, longer time to get to them maybe. But um, all you guys that make videos, I will be watching. Okay. That's it until whenever I can get back on here. Um, I don't, I don't think, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be end of work on Saturday. I stand, a, I stand a possibility of getting Sunday off, but I'm not sure. Um, so we'll see how everything goes. Hope everybody's doing well. I'll be back. And see, having a new job is making me keep my videos short. So I guess there's an upside to it for all you guys. I will be back soon. Take care, everybody.